she ain't on camera, really. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Is everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I want to know, are you really glad to be in the house of the Lord? Will y'all stand up and worship with us? For anyone who's ever seen the mountain of their sins just disappear. For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their fears and dry their tears. For any life once empty that now finds itself alive and full of songs, victory songs, then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of God may carry on. been washed clean when I run, no I'm running from a past that's been reading to the world it might look crazy, there's just no telling what you're gonna do in that moment Jesus gets a hold of you, amen for anyone who knows the hope that keeps them moving on through troubled days Or anyone who knows they've got a future and a hope beyond the grave. 
dream Oh, every life's a different story How he brought us out of darkness into light There's no way to keep us silent Every breath's another chance to testify Testify Oh, so when I shout, no, I'm shouting From a heart that's been washed clean My past has been reading to the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. For anyone who knows the hope that keeps them moving on through troubled days. For anyone who knows they've got a future and a hope beyond the grave. Oh, every life's a different story. How he brought us out of darkness into light. There's no way to keep us silent. Every breath's another chance to testify. Testify. Crazy, there's just no telling what you're gonna do. But in that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. My past erased, my name he changed. Let's testify. Testify. Oh, yes, my past erased, my name he changed. Let's testify. praise. Amen. I want to know how many in here has Jesus ever got to hold of you? Has he ever got a hold of you really, really good? Amen. And when he gets a hold of you, all your problems erase, right? Your name he changes. Your past is gone. It no longer means anything, right? But with him, when I shout, I'm shouting because I've been redeemed. Amen. I'm shouting because I've been washed by the blood. I'm shouting because I've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm shouting because He sanctified me. Amen. I'm shouting because I have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. We ought to be excited about it. Right, Brother Kobe? It ain't something to sit down on your blessed assurance about, but it's something that you need to get high and mighty about and excited about because it's a wonderful thing. You know, people, we hear the story of Jesus dying on the cross all the time, right? Amen. Praise God. And to some folks, that gets boring, right? But to me, it don't get boring, right? Because that cross didn't subtract from my life. It added to my life. Right? And what I once thought was something that was dead and boring is now alive and it's come up within my soul and I just can't help it but to praise the Lord. I just can't help it but to tell people about Jesus. I can't help it but to live for Him in the fullness thereof. Amen. Savior, 
Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Will you just slip up your hand and thank him for his precious blood that you've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many are thankful thank for that Jesus. today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, the Lord.
Lord is good. Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. I wonder how many have a special unspoken request. Would you slip up your hand right now? How many have lost loved ones? With your other hand, though, how many believe God is able? Why don't you put both your hands up and let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand before you right now. Lord Jesus, we bring all of our requests, all of our petitions, and Lord, we're letting them be known by the lifting up of our hands today, God. And God, we surrender them unto you, God, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional, our lost loved ones, God, we give them unto you right now. And God, we know that there is nothing impossible with you, for with you all things are possible. And I ask you to meet every need in this place today, God. We combine faith, Lord, with one another. And God, we're believing you, God, to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, meet every need. God, I don't care if it's breast cancer. God, if it's prostate cancer, if it's arthritis. God, if it's bursitis, if it's a headache. God, if it's something even more serious. God, I'm asking you, God, to meet every need in this place today. Meet every need, even watching by social media today. God, I pray God reach down, God reach down even where they're at, God. And Lord, I pray that you will touch them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm reminded of the centurion God. He said, if you'll just speak the word, speak the word, I know that my servant will be made whole. And God, I ask you to speak your word, God, into somebody's life today. God, speak life into somebody today. God, and bring healing and restoration and joy and happiness, Lord Jesus, and peace. God, I ask you, God, believing that you're going to do it for somebody in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said, amen. I want you to, uh, for offering today, again, I appreciate everything that you do. Let's do the penny march first. Amen. I'm glad they put that up because I sure forget it about every time. Amen. Come on, children's. Now, for offering, I tell you, I want us to do something different. I want you just to bring your offering today. And uh, and that way you can just, uh, that way we, you can loosen up, get loosened up to give, amen. You can get to your pocketbooks better. You can get to your wallets a little better, amen, amen. And then you can really think about it when you drop it over in the plate, amen, and how good God is and amen. how much he's blessed you. So I'm on somebody. Yeah. Amen. 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 How many has God blessed in this place? Amen. 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 Father, I pray that you'll bless this offering today. Yes. Lord, bless those that have to give. Lord, those yes. that may not. But Lord, that which is given, that it will go for the building of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Why don't you just bring your offering, will you? We're going to have a good time today in the house of the Lord. We're going to have a good time today in the house of the Lord. I'm going to rejoice, lift my voice. It's my choice, make a little noise. I'm going to have a good time today in the house of the Lord. I'm going to have a good time today in the house of the Lord. Our hearts in one accord, one thing, 
one baptism, one spirit and one Lord. Are the things of earth behind me, I have put them all on hold. I'm gonna have a good time today in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna have a good time today in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna have a good time today in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna rejoice, lift my voice. It's my choice. Silently, here's what I have to say. I am not ashamed to say I've come to shout for joy. I'm gonna have a good time today in the house of the Lord. Oh, I'm gonna have a good time today in the house of the Lord. say play skillfully on the stringed instruments so you want to make sure you're in the right key somebody <laughs> say amen. amen he became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and he carried the So amazing, love so amazing, yeah, Jesus Messiah. Messiah 
Jesus Messiah Name above all names Blessed Redeemer Clap of praise. Amen.
find the Lord with me. Worship Him. Oh, come exalt His name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt His name. That the Lord is good, He'll give you everything, He'll give you everything. Y'all give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Magnify the Lord with me. You can go back to Nehemiah chapter number four. I can't seem to get away from Nehemiah currently. And so I guess today would be part four. Are you willing? Are you willing to do the work that God has called you to do? Are you willing? to carry the anointing that God has given you in your life. And uh, it comes uh, at a price. Hello, somebody. Well, it's going to be a rough crowd today. Help me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. But before I preach, I want to sing. I'm going to attempt to sing. Amen. I, I know it's an, it's an old one. And I sing it a whole lot, but how many know that you've entered the haven of rest? How many believe you've entered the haven of rest? And how many are glad you've entered the haven of rest? Worship with me today. Praise his holy name. soul in sad exile was out on life's sea so burdened with sin and distress then I heard a sweet voice saying make me your choice and I entered Oh 
many believe that you're safe evermore? Amen. Praise his holy name. In Nehemiah chapter number four, we find that Nehemiah has now began this work for God. This work that God has called him to. And I want to tell you, I know there's a lot of um, prosperity preaching that goes on. Uh, and I do believe, David, that God will prosper you. I, I do believe it's God's will that we're blessed. I, I, I may not drive a, as Caleb likes, a Tesla. He likes that Tesla. Um, he says, I will have one. I said, son, you keep believing that. And you work for it, and praise God, you can have it. You may not have a Tesla, but I do believe that God wants his people to be blessed. But in the meantime, when God calls us to do something, then he's calling us not to a bed of roses, not to something that's going to always be easy, but he's calling us to something that's going to require faith, right? Uh, how many know that there are a lot of times you're going to walk more by faith than you will anything else? And that means when you walk by faith that you're walking by the unseen hand of God, sometimes not even fully aware of what's going to happen, but you're trusting the one Hallelujah, that has called you to it. And if he's called you to it, he will take you through it. Somebody ought to help me in this place. I believe that when God calls us to something, it's not just a blind test. He has a purpose and a vision for us. And so in Nehemiah chapter 4, we find in the first few verses, three guys among several others, I'm sure that would chime in because as I've put in my notes later for this sermon, misery loves company. You can always find somebody that'll gossip with you, that'll talk about the preacher with you. I, I wish I had somebody that would help me. You, you'll always find those of like mind, you know, just like we must find people of like-minded faith. If I'm trying to believe God for something, I want those around me that's believing God with the same amount of faith that I am. Hello, somebody. Don't give me somebody if I need prayer for, for healing. Don't give me something that somebody says, well, if it's the Lord's will. I, I, I'm not looking for that because it is God's will that we're healed. I don't understand why everybody doesn't receive healing like we think they ought to. That's God's business. Mine is just to believe him that he'll do it. And if I'm going to believe him to do it, I'm going to get people around me that's going to believe he's going to do it as well. Well, that's the introduction. Such as it is. But we find that just like we're to, you know, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We've got those standing in the, or sitting in the stands. How many have loved ones that's went on to be with the Lord? Maybe you have some friends that you used to go to church with that you know for a fact they're up, they're up there. If they didn't make it, we don't stand a chance. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Anybody know anybody like that? But in, in, in the book of Hebrews, he said, wherefore we're uh, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that would easily, listen, I don't have time to get entangled with all this other junk. I'm trying to make it, hallelujah, and I'm trying to take as many people with me as I can. 
So with that being said, the kingdom of darkness operates very similarly to the kingdom of God. See, we're fighting an enemy that is a counterfeit. I'll never forget one time, David, I, I was out of town at a minister's meeting. And I had left the bank here in King. So I had a little cash on me. I roll up to this convenience store, Brother David. I'm going to get me a Diet Pepsi and a pack of mints. I don't want anybody smelling my breath. Hello. Especially when I'm praying for somebody. If they fall out, I want it to be the spirit, not my breath. Hello, somebody. Are you with me? <laughs> I tell you, I've had some that prayed. I said, God, please touch their breath. I tell you, I, I, I need a touch right now, but I, you need to touch them as well. Somebody help me. So I'm going in to get me a pack of mints and a Diet Pepsi. And I pull out a five, a $5 bill. That was it. $5. If it had been larger than that, we'd had camp meeting in that place. I wouldn't have had to go to the minister's meeting and have camp meeting. We'd have had it right there. Because I give her, I don't know at the time, it was like $3 and something, and I give her this five, and, and she and she wands that thing or whatever they do to see if it's counterfeit. This is fake. I said, you better talk again. It's fake. I said, what do you mean fake? I just got it from the bank. It's not real. And I'll have you know, she took that $5 and refused to give it back. I said, God, help me. Please help me. This woman refuses to give my $5 back. God, help me not to reach across this counter and snatch that five dollars back out of her hand before she can stick it somewhere. You hear me? Stick in the drawer, whatever she does with all them counterfeits. But she refused to give the money back. She declared it was a counterfeit five dollar bill. And I can't I can't testify to it or not. But can I it looked real to me. And apparently it looked real to the bank. If it if it may, I I didn't go anywhere else but from the bank to the minister's meeting, which was out of town, I made no more stops. So I got that five that five dollars from the bank. I thought, man, this must be a good counterfeit five dollar bill if this done made it through the bank. Are you with me? Here we find that the enemy has a counterfeit for every single thing that God stands for or that he does. Just like we know. God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going here. You just bear with me. And in the end, we'll find that you have, you know, the Antichrist, the false prophet. You follow me? So he'll have a trio as well. And, and so what I find here at the beginning of this chapter <clears throat> is that as they're beginning to do the work, Nehemiah has assembled all of the help. Everybody knows their job. Everybody knows their calling. Everybody's ready to work, and they're beginning to work, and they're doing the work. But then all of a sudden, here comes the devil. Isn't it amazing to me that when you make a determination to move forward, and you make a determination that, God, here I am, send me. Whatever it is that you want me to do, whatever realm that you want me to serve in, God, I'm willing. And can I tell you, you best be ready for the winds of this world to come against you. You better be ready for the winds of the enemy to come against because if you think he's going to sit back and allow you just to tiptoe through the roses and the tulips and to smell the daisies and the honeysuckle, you've got another thing coming. And I want to tell you something. I used to think that 
You know, when you're doing the will of God, everything's got to be right, everything's got to be the best, and you'll not encounter any opposition, and you'll not encounter any hardships, but that is the furthest thing from the truth. And if anybody else tells you any of that, then you need to go back and read some Scripture. Because it is, Paul said, I pray, like I said last week, I press. That means to bear down. And there are going to be times in our life, I don't know why I'm saying all this, you just bear with me, that when we're going, we're going to be bared down on by the enemy, by the world, and even by our flesh because it's not going to want to press in to what God has for you. Uh, how many ever had, had uh, yard work or housework and you just keep putting it off? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like doing it now. I'll put it off till tomorrow. How many ever done that? So you can't blame all the opposition on the devil and the world. Sometimes it's purely our flesh that's not going to want to press in and continue forward into because we're in even in the even in the church world, brother White, we're in a microwave society. We forget that we serve a crock pot God. We like it in the microwave. Give me a five dollar microwave meal. Boom! In about three minutes, it's done. But I promise you, things. As I said a few weeks ago, that's done in a crock pot tastes way better. Way more flavor. Hello, somebody. Things that, you know, take time. And what I find here is that the work of God is beginning to move forward. God has called Nehemiah and the people of God to do this work he's got papers he's got support he's got the materials he's got what he needs and now we got to move forward and look at what verse 7 says now it happened Reminds me of that song, it was such a lovely day. The sun was shining bright. The gentle winds were blowing my way. Not a storm cloud in sight. But suddenly, without warning, a storm surrounded my life. But even in the storm, Even in the storm, I can feel the calm. And here's the reason why. I know the peace speaker. I just want anybody there, you know the peace speaker. I just want to see anybody in this place, you know him by name. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to close, that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create, watch this, confusion. If you, if you have confusion about anything regarding your call, it's not of God. Confusion does not come from God. In fact, the Bible says that, that he is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. So if you've got confusion, then it's not God, and you need to get along with God and get clarity. Hello, somebody. So they... They came to create confusion. And then on down, we find that, that their attempt is to kill the people of God. 
they bring swords and bows and they begin to try. Look at verse number 11. They will neither know nor see anything till we come in their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. And something I believe the Lord spoke to me very clearly in studying this passage is that according to verses 7, 8, 10 through 12, the enemy here had formed a bloody design against them. The enemy had come in. Here Nehemiah and the people of God are now working on this wall, working on the city to rebuild what the enemy many years before had come in and destroyed and taken from the people of God. So they had a plan and it was as if the, the Lord spoke to me and said the enemy has a design, a plan for your life. Can I tell you this morning that the enemy has a plan for your life. Just like God has a plan, the enemy has a plan. I began to think about that and I thought about Brother White, I thought about Abraham. God had made him a promise many years before that he would have a child. We find that at 100, most people would have been living you know, probably in a rest home or whatever by then. But here at 100, Sarah is 90. God gives them a child. But before he could get the promise, he gets in the flesh. And the enemy designed a plan to get Abraham sidetracked. And we find that while waiting on the promise, he sleeps with another lady and has a child, all the while giving in to the plan of the enemy. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying while we're waiting on God, don't get sidetracked. Well, I've been serving the Lord a long time, and, and I just hadn't... Things that not work like I want them to and th I just don't know if God's ever going to do it. Don't let the enemy put that seed in your mind. You keep believing God. You keep trusting God. You keep moving forward. You keep working on your wall, if you will, and what God would have you to do. Don't get ahead of God. Can I tell you that when we get ahead of God, we'll mess up every time. Here's another example I thought about was David. David is king. He's got all of this under his belt. And while he is supposed to be out with his people at war, he's back at home taking a break. Can I tell you we don't have time to take a break spiritually? Hello, somebody. It, we, listen, we're in a warfare. We're, we're, the enemy is playing for keeps. He's trying to distract you. He's trying to uh, war you off, if you will, from doing what God has called each and every one of us to do. Every one of us have a work. Look at your neighbor and say, we all have a work to do. He got slack. Ends up with somebody else's wife. And ends up in a mess. It's time that we stop excusing sin and realize who is behind it. Hello, somebody. The church has gotten to a place where we're hiding behind the phrase of God's will when a lot of things that we're doing is nothing more than self and a plan of the enemy. And I tell you what the enemy wants for the church is for them to be a lifeless body. 
He doesn't mind us coming to church. Hello? He doesn't really mind us giving our tithe and offerings. But what he doesn't want is for the, for the, for the presence of God to get on the inside of each of us so that when we leave here, we can win people to Christ. We can be a light to somebody that we can bear fruit. That's what he does not want to happen. God has a design for your life. His plan is to bring life and joy and happiness and resolve. Doesn't mean that it's going to be roses and mountaintops all the time. I don't know what Nehemiah really expected. I don't know if he expected to fight that much opposition. But nonetheless, he had to fight it. It just means that I'm following him, and when I'm following him, I cannot lose. Hello, somebody. In fact, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. God has a plan for you. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's not a promise to immediately rescue us from hardship or suffering but it's a promise that God has a plan for our lives and regardless of our current situation, he can work through it to prosper and give us a hope. Something else I want you to notice about verse 9 is that the people of God set a watch. He set guard if you will, in verse 13. In other words, they set boundaries. Can I tell you something? Don't give the enemy nor some people access to certain areas of your life. Just like Nehemiah ends up setting boundaries, setting guards, setting a watch night and day He's got people watching. Can I tell you, we need to be watching at all times against any adversary that comes in to steal what? To kill and to destroy. Isn't that what this group was right here was trying to do? They wanted to steal the, the very vision that God had given Nehemiah. They even said, we're going to kill them. That's the enemy's job. And then their, their other job was to destroy whatever that Nehemiah was going to do. They wanted to destroy, and that's what the enemy wants to do as well. But I'm reminded of something in the Word of God that says, having done all to stand, Paul said, stand there for. He says, take up the whole armor or the full armor, as one translation says, of God. That means you're going to have to get up. You're going to actually have to do something for the kingdom of God. God is not going to bless you over here until you first are committed over here. If that had been some of us, we'd have said, Now, Lord, I'm just going to sit right here and wait. And maybe in 52 days you'll have this wall done. I believe you're going to do this for me, Lord. I just believe it. You're going to do it, and yet we're not doing anything on our part. Wow. Help me, somebody. You see, I feel like oftentimes we as the people of God, we look at God as, as you know, just give me. Just, I, I just want you to bless me, bless me, bless me. I'm going to sit right here, and I want you to bless me, Lord. But what I find with Nehemiah is that he actually had to get up, right? He had to move forward. He had to take initiative. I'm preaching. Hello, somebody. He had to get a plan together. God, you, God, you can't expect God to bless you when you don't even have a plan yourself. Well, Lord, I want, I want this. I, I just, just, bless, just bless me. Just bless me. And God's saying, well, what are you going to do? 
I mean, I can bless you, but I need to know how committed you are. How serious are you about what you're asking me for? What are you going to do when the enemy comes in? The Bible says they were very, they were vexed. They had great indignation. Sometimes the mere fact that God is going or already is going to use you vexes some people. It just, it just rolls all over them. You ever heard anybody say that? Said it just rolled, that just rolled all over me. It just burns me up. You ever heard that phrase? It just burns the devil up. Hallelujah, when God begins to use you. Because he wants you to believe that you're a nobody, doing anything, going nowhere. Hallelujah, that God doesn't love you, that he doesn't trust you. But can I tell you, God loves you. God has a plan for you. He's got a future for you. Hallelujah. He said, I'll walk with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I'll go with you. I'll go with you. And some people just don't like it because it's you. They want it to be them. Some people look at you and they're, they're just they're mad and jealous and whatever because you're in the shape you're in. God has blessed you, but they just don't realize the stuff you've been through to get where you at. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. They'll make it their personal vendetta to make you the subject of all their sundry jokes. They don't like you and they don't want anybody else to like you. But they, they displayed their tenacity. They said, we're not giving up. We're not, we're not about to let the devil, we're not about to let this enemy, we're not about to let this set group of people hinder us from moving. You've got to get that way. You got people are going to talk. They're going to they're going to discuss you. They're going to have you for lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Hello, they, they, you know. And and the way I look at it, if they're talking about me, they're giving you a break. Hello, somebody. Praise His holy name. But you can't let that hinder you. I'm reminded of another story. It said God said He would turn it around. Got what the devil meant for evil. God will make it good, turn around, turn around, hallelujah, and turn around. Somebody ought to help me in this place. Nehemiah takes notice. He takes precautions. He sets people in place. What you need to do is get you some people around you that you know is going to be praying for you. That's got your back. Hallelujah. The reason that God may have separated you from some people is he heard conversations that you didn't hear. Hello, somebody. God may have taken some people out of your life because he heard conversations that you didn't. Hallelujah. Praise his holy. So stop running yourself rampant. I don't know why I'm saying all this, but stop running yourself rampant trying to chase after people. Hello, somebody. God sees and God knows and God's going to take care of it. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Just, just trust him. Trust him. Trust him. You got to fight. You got to fight. Put up boundaries for your family. Fight for your family. You have to make up your mind that you're going to be committed. This is the long haul, Lord. I'm committed. I'm not turning around. I'm not giving up. But by the grace of God, I'm going to win that shining crown. Some, someday. You may have to fight for your marriage. Hello? You may have to fight for your family. 
Hallelujah. You might get upset with ever you might get upset with each other, but you just got to keep moving, keep moving forward. Watch this. Verse 15. When our enemies, and it happened, it happened again. But this time, when our enemies heard that it was known to us, in other words, you've got to get resolved down here. If you know that God has called you to do something, if God has anointed you to do something, you've got to get resolved here. Stop worrying about the approval of others. What I find about Nehemiah, he wasn't sitting here trying to get everybody's approval. He done got the approval. He done got the king's, mm, boy, that's good. He done got the king's approval. Can I tell you, I've got an audience of one. And his name is G-O-D. Hello, somebody. And as long as I've got his approval, I don't need anybody else's approval. If I know that he's called me, I've got resolve about it. I don't need your approval. Hello, somebody. Neither do you need mine. When God, when we're working for him and God has set us up, then we don't have to worry about everybody else. They had resolve, committed. He already had papers. Can I tell you, as I said it last week, you've got papers, the B-I-B-L-E, that God has called you and set you apart. Hello, somebody. Look at your name and say, I've been set apart. Amen. It was known to us. In other words, We've got resolve about this thing that we call a relationship with Christ. I've got resolve about it. I'm secure in, in, in what I know. I know he saved me. Hello? The enemy sometimes, his job is to try to get us to, to, to just think we didn't get what we know we got. But how many remember when the Lord saved you? You say, why do you keep reminding about it? Uh, when the Lord, because I think sometimes we need to go back and be reminded of what the Lord did for us so that it doesn't change our mind about what God truly has done in our life. If He has washed you, you ask forgiveness, His blood has cleansed you, then guess what? You are a child of the Most High God. And I don't need the devil's approval, and I don't need others. He said it was known to us. You've got to get it down on the inside of you that you know, that you know, that you know. I had a guy ask me here a few weeks ago. He said, he said, how have you done it? I said, done what? He said, well, you've been at your church how long? I said, 19 years. He said, how have you done it? <laughs> I sat back in the chair. And I said, I've done it because I know without a doubt that God has called me to do it. And that's the same, that's the same resolution that I get right here, that it was known to us. Finally, the enemy got it. Not going to be able to change their mind. We've tried ridiculing them. We've tried to you know, scoff at them. We've tried to make fun of their work. Hello? I'm sure there are people that stand around and look at, look at me and they say, boy, I could pastor that church a lot better than him. And you probably could. Not going to lie about it. Oh, I can preach a lot better than you probably can. But one thing I know <laughs> is that God has set me here. I don't have to question it. I don't have to wonder about it. It's just something that I've got on the inside and you know that you know. You ever heard that phrase? You know that you know that you know. I just want to see anybody in here that you know, that you know, that you know that God has saved your soul. Hallelujah. And that he's got to work for you. How many know that in this place? When, 
When the enemy, the enemy finally figured it out, well, I hope the devil knows today that I have not changed my mind about serving the Lord. I, I, I don't expect it to be easy, but here's one thing I do expect uh, is that the Lord is going to stand by my side. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him in this place. He's going to stand with me. He's not going to leave me nor forsake me. That ought to, that ought to serve, that ought to serve as, as, a, as a big birthday cake to somebody. How many like birthday cake? This ought to just taste real good to you this morning because you know that you know that you know that God has called you. I'm not giving up. But it was finally known to the enemy. They finally got it. What we've tried so far is not working. I thought if we made fun of them, it would discourage them. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you there are not times that we all get discouraged. How many, how many has ever been discouraged? I tell you, it, it gets discouraging. When you don't see things happen like you think they ought to happen or in the time frame. Yeah, I hit the button again. I need to keep the buttons over there facing you, I think. I'm on this examining board where all kinds of people come in to try to get licensed and in the church of God. And, and I sit with all kinds, all ages of people. And I love to sit with them and talk with them and get to know them and get to know their background and where they're from and how God called them and how God, you know, saved them. And I, I just love to hear that stuff. And not that I have to know every detail, but we all come from various backgrounds, and yet the Lord has washed us all in his blood. And what I like about it, David, his blood has made us all one. I, you, you know, that, that's beautiful to me. I, you know, we, we may not all look the same and act the same and, 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 and everything, but God, his blood has made us one. And, and, and so they, I said, what do you feel like the Lord's called me to do? Oh, and they tell me. I said, are you sure? And they'll, they'll look at me like I've just said a cuss word. I said, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm just asking. I, I want to make sure that you're sure. What did you do? I said, I planted a church. Oh, I want to plant a church. Are you sure? It's not that I'm getting them trying to cause a doubt or confusion or question. I just, you, you going to have, to, when God calls you to do something, especially in particular, you're going to have to really make sure. Because are you willing to go through the scoffing? Are you willing to go through the making fun and, and, the, and, the, and the critics and, and all of those that, that say all grades of things? Watch this. Not only did the enemy know that they knew, they had resolved, but that God had brought their plot to nothing. All of a sudden it rang in their, in their mind, hey, they're serving one. He's on their side, and they're not losing. We are. We're the one that looks like a bunch of idiots out here. I believe that. I believe that's how they felt. We're the one who looks like a bunch of nincompoops out here. We're, we're out here making fun, calling names, throwing all kind of shade, whatever you want to call it, and yet everything that we're doing is not working. Kind of reminds me of Pharaoh. He refused to let the people of God go. But that last plague hit home. It hit his house. 
and all the praying, all the false gods, all the sacrificing, all the calling out, the cutting, the, the beating their head against the wall, all of whatever they did, did not work. Even at that moment, Pharaoh found out because they thought there that they were a God. Found out, I'm not him. Finally said, you got to go. You, you can't stay around here. You got to go. Your God is God. I believe at this moment they realized your God, Nehemiah, is God. And he's with you. And that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. On judgment day, when we're standing before the Lord, he's not going to ask us about our brother and sister. He's going to ask us about us. Did you? Were you faithful? Oh, but I, no, no, that's not going to work on that day. Oh, but my family, you, you don't realize the family, not going to ask you about your family. He's going to ask you about you. Is this all right? He, he's going to ask you, what did you do? For me. Did you do what I've called you to do? No, I didn't do it because I didn't want to be like so and so. That's not what I asked you. Were you faithful? I read something on Facebook. I'm almost done. But I read something on Facebook here a few days ago. There's a difference between church people and God's people. I'd never thought about it like that. Because God's people are the church. It's not a building. It's a relationship. And I just wonder today, are you doing? Are you committed? Are you faithful? Not to me, not to the church building, but to God. And if the answer is no, then my question to you this morning is what are you waiting on? Well, I'm waiting until I get married and then I'm going to try to do. No, no, no. <laughs> well, well, you know, and, and, and listen, we're, we've been doing it. We've been playing the pass game e ever since Cain killed Abel. Am I my brother's keeper? And then the blame game since Adam and Eve. It's her fault. Well, it's my wife's fault and I don't obey the Lord. Well, my husband, he holds me back. And then she says, no, it was the serpent's fault. Are you really blaming an animal for that? God, help us. Because what I'm saying is there's so much work just like this wall. The, the walls of the city of Jerusalem were torn down and there was work to be done to rebuild. We're trying to build the kingdom of God. And yet what are we doing? Many of us have talents. I, I don't know why I'm saying all this. Please just bear with me. If you don't like it, pray for me. But many of us have gifts and talents and abilities. And 
How, how are we using them? Are we waiting on the, the preacher to ask? Are we waiting on somebody else to, oh, you got it. You got it. Well, it's one thing to have it. It's another thing to use it. You would find later that, I believe at the beginning in chapter 6 and on, that because the scoffing and the laughing and the making fun and the calling names and all this other stuff didn't work, that then they began to conspire to try to devise a plan to stop all of it. Folks, Jesus is coming again. He's coming back. Not for a broke, pitiful, pathetic church. He's coming back for a church that's working and on fire for him. Would you stand with me? Are we making excuses? Are we blaming everything and everybody else? Are we lifting up the plan of the enemy against our life more than the plan of God for our life? every head bowed, every eye closed, the saints of God pray. Is there anybody in this place that would say, you know what, preacher? I'm willing to do whatever it is that God would have me to do. I'm willing Are you, are you in this place? Is there anybody in this place that would say, Pastor, I need a touch from God. I need a touch from God. And you'd like to come and receive prayer. Anybody? Is there anybody in this place today that would say, that's me? I need a touch of God. I'm oh. caught up in your presence. I'm going to pray with these. Will you stretch your hands out this way? And help me pray for these that have come today. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. No, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe.
Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. And I just want you. And I'm sorry when I've just gone I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I'm caught up in your presence. I just want sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave No, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you Nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. No, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. Will you slip up your hand right now and just praise him a moment? I oh, feel him in this place. Up in your presence. Yes, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Well, I just want to sit here at your feet. If you know it, just sing along. I'm caught up in this holy moment. Holy moment, Lord Jesus. I never want to leave. Come on, let's sing that again. Let's sing that again. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm caught up in your prayer. I 
never want to leave. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Yes, Lord, not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Lord Jesus. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through I'm sorry when I just sang another song to take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough to take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I just want you and nothing else. And nothing else. Nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. And nothing else. Father, we love you today. And I pray, God, Lord, that you will bless your people today. That your face will shine upon your people today, Jesus. Lord, that you will bless your people and keep them today. God, I ask you, God, to meet every need in this place today, God. I've been given several today. God, you know who they are, what they have need of. And God, I ask you, God, even right now, God, each and every request that you will touch. God, that your hand will reach down you will heal, that you will mend, that you will restore, that you will bless today and deliver and set free. God, we're believing it. We're receiving it in the name of Jesus. God, we just give you glory and praise and honor for the presence of God that we feel, that I feel in this place today. In the name of Jesus. Before we completely dismiss, one more time, will you just slip up your hand? You don't have to, but if you want to, would like to, and would be willing to, just slip up your hand and praise Him right now. Nothing else will do. I just want you. God, help us today just to want else. you. And nothing else, nothing else will do. And I just want you. Is that your desire today? You just want him? Else. You just want him? And nothing else. 
You just want to be in his presence? Nothing else will do. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise his holy name. Thank you for being here today. If you are new, there are should be a connect card somewhere on your row. You can fill that out and return it to me so that we maybe we could connect with you. Amen. But it's been such a joy to have you, all of our people. Still got a lot of people out on vacation. Amen. Um, I hope that Ashland and Cole at, at the beach. Um, well, I would be ugly. <laughs> Amen. 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 I hope they have a good time. Praise the Lord. I had to come back yesterday. They stay until Thursday. Amen. Uh, may a thousand fleas infest their armpits. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that was I, that just slipped out. I, I, but um, Amen. No, I, I'm picking on them. But uh, I have a lot of people out. I want you to just continue to pray for traveling mercies as summer is, the season is winding down and Lord, help us as we enter into the cold season. How many like cold weather? Well, I better not say nothing about the cold weather then. Amen. Amen. I just know I have to put on more layers, praise God. Hallelujah. But the Lord is good. Amen. Listen, I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate all that you do. Uh, you help make ministry here possible tonight. We're going to do our first singing. We're going to have a little singing. Uh, and our our people are going to be singing tonight. But in the future, I hope maybe to even bring in some groups and have some singings on some Sunday nights and things like that. So tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a singing, and we're just going to come in and worship the Lord, have a singing, and and uh, just bless the name of the Lord in in song. And I believe that's important too. How many know David was a psalmist? And uh, he played and he sang and it would drive the enemy out. It did so. And uh, so we, we love music and we love singing. We're going to have that tonight at 6 o'clock. I hope you can make it. If not, just pray for us. Amen. In the meantime, are all hearts and minds clear? They're clear. Somebody said clear. They're clear. Praise the Lord. All right. Shake hands and, and, uh, and be friendly. Praise the Lord.